Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about the SSH service and how to make that work on your, on your server. Now SSH stands for Secure Shell and it's basically a way for you to connect two computers together with a secure encrypted connection and you're communicating back and forth using the terminal and so the terminal access is the way that you would be able to communicate with one another it really gets into the core of uh, Unix itself and causes you to use something that many of you as home users may not use now if you remember earlier I talked about uh, telling you that if you didn't need to connect that way that uh, you really didn't necessarily need to use SSH uh, in fact uh, SSH is uh, one of those uh, protocols that a lot of bots out there look for to be able to hack into a server you'll start to see uh, a lot of different uh, servers trying to gain access to your server through the SSH protocol uh, again it is secure if you've got a secure password you're, you're fine uh, but you know you don't really if you don't really need to use it you don't need to turn it on but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you uh, what it means to turn it on what it looks like and how to communicate uh, between your server and another computer uh, through the terminal so that you kind of get how this particular service works so what you would do is come into the server application if you want to turn it on go to server and go to settings here and then just click allow remote login using SSH once you do that the service is turned on and, uh, le and uh, let me show you what that looks like I'm gonna pull up uh, the actual let me just go here the system preferences here and so if you go into sharing every client also has the ability to do remote login and you can see remote login is right here and uh, once you check that that turns on the SSH service you'll notice that mine's checked now and the service is on because the server automatically enabled that for itself on my computer it'll also tell you right below to log into the computer you type in SSH and then usually your username and then your server or your host name is what you would put in there uh, you can also limit access to only certain users as you can see in this case it's only uh, administrators are allowed to use it so it's got some security on it but once you do that then basically SSH is turned on on my machine here and I can access it now if I want to access my machine uh, this particular server let me just pop this down the one thing I do have to remember is to open up the right port if I come over to my router here because I have the airport uh, extreme base station connected to my server the server has this uh, ability for me to control it built in all I would do is come down here and hit the plus button and in this drop down here I would add this remote login SSH here and that would open up port 22 on my router to allow for SSH communications to happen with my server now for those of you that aren't using an airport extreme base station you just need to know that it is port 22 and you'll need to open that on your router by yourself I'm just going to cancel this for a second and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this down and what I'm going to do is show you how to access another computer through the terminal using SSH okay here I am on a terminal uh, window here again nothing fancy because I'm now into the code uh, of the computer and what I want to do is I want to connect to another computer through SSH so what I'm going to do is you basically just to connect to that other computer you would type SSH with a space and then you type in your uh, username at whatever your host name is so I'm going to type that in here for this particular one okay and then you would hit enter and what will happen is it will go out and it will look to connect and you notice it says that the authenticity of this particular host can't be established it always will say that but it has an RSA key with a fingerprint there and basically what that means is that's the secure key that it's going to use to allow my computer to communicate with the other computer over SSH and it says are you sure you want to continue connecting yes or no so you just type yes in there if that's what you want to do and it's going to say okay it's permanently added this person to the list of known hosts it's just warning you hey this is the case you sure you want to do that and then you go and you put in your password and once you do that now all of a sudden it's saying yes you're logged in and what you should see is at the beginning here you should see your uh, the actual name uh, of the computer that you've connected to and it's showing that I'm connected to that computer and now I have the ability to talk to that computer and actually I'm inside the computer itself so I can do uh, a number of things uh, for instance I can type in different uh, commands so if I want to see the actual current directories that I uh, have access uh, uh, for on that particular server I just type ls which is uh, list command and when I hit that now it shows me my directory structure and you can see here I got desktop downloads movies pictures documents library music public it's a pretty 
standard uh, Mac install, but allows me to kind of look and see what, uh, what current directory that I'm on at this particular time. Uh, you can also kind of uh, you can also do a print the uh, working directory another command and I'm not going to give you a ton of these I'm just kind of letting you take a look at it uh, so it's showing that right now I'm logged in at users with my uh, basically root okay so my users and this particular user is the user that I'm logged in as this would be the user that I logged in at the top with when I actually did the SSH command user at uh, so there are various commands and things that you can do um, to uh, to access the server, and you can move files around and things, different things like that, all through the terminal. Now, yes, it's technical. Yes, it might take some time to get used to, uh, but it is kind of an efficient way to do that. You could actually even read uh, the contents of a file and those kinds of things all through the terminal uh, script. Now. It's not the prettiest thing, but it is a way to connect. One of the other things I want to show you is I want to show you how you can actually move files around doing this, where you can upload files to a server and you can download files from a server uh, using SSH through the terminal window. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, here we are on a screen share of another computer that I've got. It's got a file on its desktop called test, uh, which is an RTF. I've got an upload file on this computer uh, that's an RTF as well, and then I've got my terminal window and what I want to do is show you how to move these files around to these different servers so what I would do if I want to move this file here up to this particular computer I would come in here and I would use a command called SCP which is what's going to allow me to copy it over then what you're going to want to do is I need to put the path the file path to this particular file that I want to upload so this would be uh, users right and then my home uh, directory name and it's on the desktop with another slash and then it's the upload file and I want to put RTF because that's the type of file that it is then what I do is just put a space and then what I want to use now is the actual name the SSH name for this particular computer so I'm gonna put that in with the at sign and then put in the actual host name or you can also put in the IP address if you'd rather do that either way it should uh, work fine for you then you're gonna follow that with a colon and then you put in the actual uh, file path that I want it to end up up here which is again very similar because it's gonna be users with that particular name at uh, on the desktop now if I've done this right this file here should start should copy and go up here now I'm gonna hit enter over here on the terminal and it's gonna ask for the password of the place that I'm sending it to so since I'm sending it to this remote machine I need to put the password of that machine in here okay now once I hit uh, return what will happen is you can see it started to upload this file 100 percent and now you see the file show up on the desktop here so I was able to move this file copy it over to here just using the terminal so pretty neat huh so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the syntax to do it the reverse way so we can take this file from here and put it down here so again it's the same idea I'm gonna type in SCP again only this time I'm gonna start with the password of this area up here so the SSH uh, information that I use to log into that particular computer I want to put that in first then I follow it with a colon and then what I'm going to do is I need the file path to this file here uh, to be able to move it down so what I would do then is use my backslash again so you can see I'm doing it the different direction here and you want to make sure you have the file uh, extension on there and then I'm going to put where I want it to actually go to and that's uh, this location on my computer I know it's kind of tedious here and I'm gonna hit enter and then this time I'm gonna put in the password of the computer that I'm on right now and hit enter alright and it's actually the the password of the computer I'm moving it from and you can see that it's moved it over you have can't see it on the side here but I got it right here and now this file is on my desktop so I've been able to put this file here on the desktop upload this one to there so you can see there are some neat things that you can do with the terminal if you get used to the commands and understand them and it's an efficient way to move things around in a future screencast I'll show you how to do this sort of thing in a more visual way uh, using a, a different protocol but at least this gets your uh, gives you an idea of the types of things that SSH can do for you
Well, that's all I have for this week. I will be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.